Welcome to Bridge Atlantic's interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. And I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcin Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats, literally and figuratively. When I'm not releasing music under my own name or my side project, Midnight Soundtrack, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists or directing and editing music videos and music documentaries. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as my name, Marcio Novelli. And as you can see, our shirts have arrived. Marcy and I are wearing them at every opportunity. Yeah, we're matching um, today, actually. We're both we wearing are black. For, this is not I think planned. it's the first time. It's yeah, the well, first time we've, yeah. we've matched. I think, um, I think maybe. So it's a very special moment, it's a special moment in time. Touching. So to honor this special moment in time, you should probably head over to our website and buy one of your own. There's a link to it in our show notes, so go get them. Yeah, and get 10% off by entering the coupon code BTA Rocks. Whether or not you agree with that statement, it'll get you 10% off the shirt. So just use it. <laughs> Yeah, what have you got to lose? Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, yeah, uh, credibility. Um, <laughs> this week we're excited to be joined by Justin Pierre out of Minnesota. Uh, Justin was the co founder and lead vocalist of Motion City Soundtrack and with them released six albums between 1997 and 2015. The band's songs gave thoughtful perspectives on mental health and self doubt, and they recently wrapped up a farewell tour, but hopefully it's not the end. Justin's known for his very personal lyrics, trademarks, sideburns, and glasses, and he also hosts a podcast with his wife called Book Narcs. He also makes short films and directs music videos, with some of his credits including work for Limbeck and Sing It Loud. We're looking forward to getting to know more about Justin, his work with Motion City Soundtrack, and what the future holds. Hey Justin, welcome to the show. Oh my god, it was so hard not to say anything during that. Uh, <laughs> hi. Do you Thanks want to say it all night? Just, <laughs> say it now. No, now. I just... I think I just like to, to, to either, it's not like I like to hear myself talk, but I like to make sounds. Uh, it drives my wife nuts. Um, I just am constantly singing or making noises or clicking or just, you know, something. So, yeah. So thank you for that. It's, it's, it's sending me out. Maybe you can tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Uh, maybe fidgeting is one of them. And it would be really great if this is something, at least one of them, uh, that someone, some, at least one of them being something that people don't really know about you. Can't really People get my words out today. <laughs> well, I kind of um, is it is it top secret that you asked me to come up with this list ahead of time, or uh, I don't know what you're talking or, about. Or no. oh, okay, um, no, I, I well, I didn't know exactly how this was going to come about, so I sort of had yeah, fuck it, I don't know. I, I have this problem where I have to preface <laughs> everything I do, right. which is annoying. It's yeah. almost like in the same line of. Um, like, let's say you tell a story, right? Mo from what mm -hmm. I'm told, most people, if they've heard someone tell them a story, then tell another person that same story, but just pretend that it happened to them. I, on the other hand, happen to say, oh, my friend Aaron, who told Susan uh, this thing about this, I, this, I'm the same this way guy said that. And then I tell the story and it's like so yeah. removed from me, but it still has yeah. the same amount of impact. Yeah. So I feel like constantly prefacing everything is is the same thing. So you're not alone. You know, you're not alone. That. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I may not have done this correctly. Okay. Stop with the prefacing. Here we go. <laughs> so my favorite movie is either Faces by John Cassavetes or Stranger Than Paradise by Jim Jarmusch, uh, and both I think are incredibly flawed in many many ways. Yet uh, each have this sort of bizarre kind of insight into human behavior when looked at, you know, in the right right light. At a certain angle, and I'd like to think that I'm, I'm similar to those movies, just without any of the insight. Uh, <laughs> and I'd say that um, another thing, you know, like I, I wish to attain some sort of like enlightened state, you know, by way of meditation or yoga, uh, what have you. But the, the harder I try to do that, you know, chase it, the more it escapes me. And the initial discouragement I feel, you know, ev eventually leads me back around to attempting th the whole process over again, uh, resulting in the same sort of circle of defeat. Uh, some might call this psychotic behavior, uh, but as I get older, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward a more eternal sunshine of the spotless mind way uh -huh, of thinking, uh -huh. which is to say that the act of attempting this ridiculous circle of defeat in spite of the outcome is the point of it all. Um, so that's one thing. 
mind blown. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then, and then, and then, lastly, uh, I don't know if it's apparent or not, but I deeply care about the human race, um, and I align myself with the people who are fighting for basic human rights. You know, the people who do not have the power, the people whose voices are trying to be stifled, and the people who are people just like the rest of us. Yeah. So uh, we know you from Motion City Soundtrack. Um, you and I were talking before. Before we started recording, uh, I, I've seen you guys live a few times. Um, I think one thing that stands out to me about Motion City Soundtrack is that, that you guys had a, a longevity that a lot of bands can only dream of. I mean, your career is around 20 years or so, and that doesn't really happen that much for many people. What do you think you could attribute that longevity <laughs> to? Uh, dumb luck. No. Uh, I think I, I, Josh had a good take on this like a while ago, like before we really got going, I mean, we were a bit older than most people were like all of our peers are like, you know, five to eight years younger than us. I think, uh, I'd have to do the math on that, but, but like, I think we signed our deal when we were like 26, um, with epitaph. And I think leading up to that point, you know, we've been playing for four or five years and I'd known Josh for almost 10 because our high school bands used to play with each other. And he, he went to a different high school than me. And we just kind of meet up, you know, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Duluth. Um, but he kind of said that his dealing with me being a total fuck show. Uh, <laughs> you know, I used to drink. I used to drink a lot. I've been sober for almost seven years now. Congratulations, uh, man. Thanks. Yeah, it's weird because I don't, I don't do anything to be sober other than not drink. No, uh, that's, that's huge, though. But... Yeah, I, you know, and since like 2005, I think I, I'd been working toward it. And then I think I had my last drink in 2010, January. Uh, so I'm coming up on seven. But uh, dealing with that, which was a huge problem before, you know, like before we signed to Epitaph. And then it kind of did this a little bit um, for a couple of years. But, but dealing with a lot of like really hard shit early on, I think helped us to be more understanding, at least them more understanding of me and my problem and just us with each other. Whereas a lot of bands, they get together, they're pretty young, they start doing stuff, they blow up or whatever, and then a big problem happens and they just implode, you know? So that might be one thing. That's totally separate from from everything so else, you, I think. So would you say the relationships you know, is just so important in keeping a band together? The bonds. Yeah. Or, yes. And then also, even if you, <laughs> and this is not to say, but even if you have problems with certain people, and I think in bands, you often like, you know, these two people over here might feel one way and these three people over here feel another, or this person hates these two people right now or what, you know, <laughs> but, but there's usually like, you can find, I think understanding how people are and realizing, okay, this is a part of the character that's never going to change. So how can we work with that uh, without enabling that behavior? But also, you know, like it, it's hard, really hard to explain, but it, it's more, I think it's almost more psychology. It's like, okay, we're going to like, this is everybody's pluses and minuses. Okay. And we just focus on the good stuff and either let the bad stuff slide or call each other out on it when we can. Um, I don't that, mean, that like, sounds like maturity vague. to me. That simply sounds like okay. maturity and, and respect for your your bandmates. Sounds like being respectful yeah, well, of each okay. other and understanding, you know, which I think is. But great. I think when you're in when when you're in like a small box moving across, you know, the world, you tend to get on each other's nerves easier. So I think in knowing that eventually you'll you know that time apart is really good. So that when you get back together, it's exciting again and, and fun until it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's, it's just, I mean, it, it's, it's hard. Like I would never want to come off sounding like I'm complaining about it because it's been a, like the best experience of my life, you know, other than having that terror of a child <laughs> and, uh, and that wonderful woman who decided that she'd marry me of all people. Um, but yeah, but Motion City has been the best you know, experience of my life, but it's, it's definitely like had its ups and downs. And I think, you know, I'm getting off track here, but, but, but like my personal take on it is that 
everything for me the hardest part was the performing because oh, really? i just never felt like i was good enough like i always wanted to be better and like if i couldn't sing it like the record it bummed me out and then i found a way to fake it but kind of sound like it or at least have a voice like i just had to have a voice for the tour because i lose my voice like that so my internal struggle was just never feeling like i was a good enough performer but everything else i could do and so i never like at least to the best of my knowledge i never complained about any of it um you know i'd just show up shit-faced you know in the early years <laughs> a few times and that would be a problem but but yeah but there's uh, what was the point of this this was a uh... well you know we're just basically like you've already touched a little bit on this but i i'll take a okay. little bit further and you know you guys have stayed together for so long and there's it's just um mm. it's very rare for bands to have such longevity you know but you've already talked a little bit about um i don't know if you'd call it alcoholism on your end but mm. uh you know you guys have had a lot of obstacles to overcome between alcoholism addiction even the departure of your drummer so I guess mm. what I want to know now is how do you get through hard times like that as a collective, as a band, you know, and um, <laughs> what insight can you maybe share to other bands that are going through similar experiences? Oh, man. Well, I mean, in terms of, I, I think it was, you know, oh, it's tough to talk about because I don't really know what it would be like for other people because it, I only know my experience, but I can say as a person who, you know, used to drink a lot and had no control over it, seemingly, um, that I don't know how it happened. I just knew at a certain point I was done. And I think I'd felt at a certain point I was done, but I couldn't stay done. And so... Uh, the only person that can really and ultimately ever do anything about it is the person who has the problem. So uh, you're faced with two options. One is getting rid of that person after, you know, nothing seems to work and they constantly, you know, they have to find it on their own. And from what I'm told, there's only a few options available to people. Either, you know, if they keep doing it, you know, they'll either die uh, they'll end up in jail or they'll end up in some sort of, you know, institution. Um, or they get better. <laughs> That's not good odds. Um, yeah. But it sucks because it's like, for the people who care about them, there's nothing they can do. I mean, you can try everything, but it really comes down to that person. So you help them as much as you can without enabling the behavior. And at a certain point, you have to just let go and hope for the best and that's not i don't think anybody wants to hear that um but if, because of my situation it's like if, if if i was gone the band didn't have a band you know so you know without the singer unless they replace the singer which people do the singer and the songwriter but, yeah yeah and it's and so i think it josh definitely understood i don't think others did un understand uh I think to varying degrees. I think Josh definitely understood that like part of recovery is relapsing and fucking up. Others didn't really see it that way. But I think that I, th it's such a weird thing because you kind of hear like, Oh, when you're on the road, there's always drinking and all this stuff. And like, we had a dry bus for a while, but then it didn't matter anymore. Um, but I think me being in the band helped me more than if, if I had taken a break from it. Because I think when I'm constantly busy and doing things, I'm a much more focused person. And it was all the time, like, e even like I'd go on tour, like my drinking was really weird. Like I'd go on tour and I'd be fine. I'd come home and I'd get super fucked up. And then I'd, I'd be drinking until I got on the bus to the next tour. And then two or three days of miserableness. And then I would be sober for the whole tour. So that was sort of my way of drinking. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, and then, so being on tour actually helped me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I've kind of got off track. Have you ever the, considered talk therapy? I, what's that? Uh, just psychotherapy, uh, speaking with, oh. yeah. As me, the therapist? No, no, or, going, or, to, or going, to going, therapist. going to, going to, going to get there. No, no, actually it's funny. I just decided to, uh, I just decided to do that. This is an, this might be more interesting. I, I don't know. Uh, but my whole life, it seems that I've had this sort of 
I'd have like gut feelings about things. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, ooh, I've got a feeling. I can't explain it, but I think I should do this, or I think I should try this, or I think I should say this, or I think I should build this, whatever it is. And 99% of the time, I would just stuff that feeling down and just ignore it. And then just in like the last few months leading up to Motion City's last tour, I don't know what happened, but I just started like... um, basically reacting to that feeling and just doing whatever it said. It wasn't saying like kill people or anything, you know, like it's just like, I just have like a, yeah, I, it's hard we, to we explain. We tell people it. to listen to their gut feeling all, all the time on this show, except yeah. if it tells you to do something to hurt yeah. someone okay. or yourself. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just really weird that like, I, I don't know why, but I, I, I don't know why I felt the need to like stuff that down. And I don't know. It's, you know, but, but so I started listening to it and then I just, and, and then, and I can't give you any really great examples, but uh, other than the one, which is like a few, like a month or two months, but like right before the final MCS show, I, I just I had this idea. I was like, you know what? A couple people have talked to me about therapy. One person was talking about kids and like having therapy with the family so that by the time they're teenagers, they're used to therapy. And then it's like, it'll really come in handy then. And then another person said that, like it, it's not as weird as it sounds. It's actually no. it's just a good way to kind of like get all the. It, it, it's almost like a meditation where you get rid of all the junk in your head and then you can kind of go forward. Um, and so I've just been thinking about that. I'm like, you know what? MCS is not going to be touring anymore, and and my identity is kind of like I don't know any other life than being to, than than touring all the time and being away. I feel like something is going to happen, a big change, and maybe I should talk to someone just in case I'd highly recommend and that was sort it. of a, well, but that was the I gut know. feeling. So then I, yeah. I did. And then I just, I, I had it lined up so that the day after I got back from tour or two days after I started seeing someone. And so I basically go once a week and it, and it's, it's great without getting into the details of it. The thing that I'm personally discovering is, is almost, it's like listening to my body as opposed to my mind. So basically what I've discovered is probably for 40 years, I've been stuffing my feelings down and I'm just now uh, discovering them for the first time. But it, it, it's weird. It's like your body has its own brain as well as your real brain. But whenever you talk about it, it just sounds like nonsense to somebody who doesn't understand that. No. And I still don't understand it, but I'm learning about it and it feels right. So it's, it's almost like it's almost just like instinctual living in a way. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, we've spoken about this before. It's a weird fact that I learned that you actually have, I think it's more brain cells in your gut than you do in your actual brain. So really, like... I don't know if it's you'd more, need, but you do have... You have um, I didn't think it was more initially, but yeah. then uh, lately I've heard it is more, gut which brain. is really strange. It's like, what's the point in the brain up there then if, if <laughs> everything's, you know, in your gut? But yeah, like... um it's weird. I'd say follow your instincts and trust that feeling. Stop pushing it down because then you just end up, I was going to say shitting yeah. it out, but that's not <laughs> quite. You, whether you realize it or not, just you talking about it and, you know, being in the position you are in and having gone through that and overcoming it, you know, it means a lot more than you might even realize opening up about that. You know, and I truly feel, I truly hope that if someone's watching or listening to this right now, that's struggling with, you know, whether being the person going through addiction or a family or friend uh, experiencing the effects of it, you know, there is hope and you, and you can overcome. I mean, the, yeah, and I didn't want to sound so dire, but I think that, I, I think that, you know, knowing how bad I was, <laughs> I just think like if I could do it, like anybody could do it. Um, you know, that's not entirely true, but I, I, I would like, I would much, you know, I, I've said this before kind of in a way, but I think when I was younger, my heroes were people like, I don't even want to put them in the same camp, but there was like, you know, Kurt Cobain, sure. but that ended a certain way of course. or like Charles Bukowski, which I've full on done a full, was it 180? Like I, I don't, I can appreciate the art, but I can't stand pretty much anything he stood for. Right. Um, you know, now. And so I found new heroes in, in, in sobriety and those people, my top three, and you can laugh if you want to or not, but, uh, would be Tom Waits uh, Jerry Stahl and Robert Downey Jr. Because I think all three of those guys... I don't think it's funny like, at all. Since, since being sober, they've made the best fucking art of their careers. For sure. And, and so I, 
like that to me gives me hope because I think a lot of at least younger people or when I was younger uh, clung on to this idea that if I exercise all my demons, I won't have anything to say. Right. And I, you know, and I <laughs> also, you know, I think that you have things to say. They just might be different, you know, or with more um, clarity. Yeah. And, and, and it all depends. And, and <laughs> you know, so yeah. Well, uh, speaking of going that, forward, big, like, I, uh, I'm really excited about what's, you know, now that, now that you're in a different place in your life, you know, your dad, you're, you're sober. I know for a few years now you're going to therapy. This is for me as a, as a fan of what you do. It's, I think it's, it's really exciting to see what you, what's going on. Like you've just right, recently launched a solo band camp. Um, you know, yeah, so that, is there going to be that, some solo that, material for you in the future? <laughs> or does the yeah, future freak I mean, you out? I, I, I oh my god <laughs> get the fuck out of here no. uh, I, that that song that i put up was originally uh some friends of mine who run an incredible site called everyone is gay um they they do this thing called the gayest compilation ever made i think once a year or once every other year and a bunch of musicians write songs for them and then they sell that and use that and they, they, they're basically i don't know if you've ever visited it but they have this incredible website where it's basically they give advice to it started out as like uh young uh gay lesbian bisexual transgender and queer youth but then and it's like really funny like it's, it, it ranges from serious to funny it's just awesome. wonderful shit you know um and uh and and i met i think i met i met Kristen who runs that like I, I don't know if it had even launched yet but but she's married to she's Jenny's wife Jenny Owen Young's and uh and I met them like way back in the day and so I kind of had watched it grow from this little thing to this huge thing and they're they're doing great stuff um anyway so I wrote that song for them and then they used it and then I had it lying around and I was like I want to put something out you know, in case people missed that. And so I was like, is it okay if I use this? And they're like, Hey man, you did it. It's your song. Do whatever you want. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I put that up on the band camp and then, and then I just sort of have been using that as a like, Hey, here's something I've done. If you want to support my future art. So long story short, yes, I'm working on a record. <laughs> I've got, I've got like hundreds of ideas and some of them are songs. Some of them are songlets, but I'm trying to break it down to 16 I'm demoing and I'm trying to get done before January so that I can go and record. And I've been talking with uh, uh, Josh Kane from Motion City. Like he he wants to do more producing, and and so I think he's going to produce this for me. Um, and I'm going to play everything on it other than the That's drums. Insane. I think I've got yeah. a guy that I want to do. Sounds like me, man. I love uh, it. Yeah, the so solo I'm, I'm going right? to try this. You. <laughs> yeah, but like I want to use solo because well, it's like I know I, when I sometimes don't, people say solo you know. record, but they like don't even like they just sing on it, and everyone else does something else. It's like. Oh, kind of a lie well, <laughs> you know? no i just mean solo because i don't like they're not I'm, the shit that i'm into is so like i don't know what motion city fans will think of it because i sure. i'm so into like the flaming lips and pavement and guided by voices and all this lo-fi shit and like i like music to hurt and i feel like if you listen to some of our songs <laughs> I like, that. like i'd say modern chemistry is like a, a good example like i'm trying to think of like the songs that i brought aren't really like they're more of this song let's like even if it kills me uh uh modern chemistry uh uh antonia like you know obviously when the band got a hold of them they made them into songs but it's kind of like this i'm really good at verses and i have no choruses and definitely no bridges <laughs> and i just kind of go a b a b and right. you know that's kind of <laughs> like my thing so i'm trying to figure out how to write songs and like drum parts are impossible I don't know drums at all. And I play bass like a guitarist. I'm just like soloing all the time on the bass. So it's just weird. Anyway, um, but that's my plan is to try to make a record in 2017 and then put it out. But also the, the archaic part was that I really want to spend my own money on it and I want to keep the cost minimal. And I want to just see what I can do with word of mouth and people. And, and, and my goal is not lofty. It is to just recoup the amount of money I spent on the art so that I can make another one. And if I can keep Love that it. up, to me, that's it's not a way to make a living, but it's a way to create art that sort of funds itself. I have a definite leg up in the fact that there are a lot of people who through Motion City will at least go, oh, how horrible is this shit? You know, check it out or, or whatever. <laughs> so at least they'll look at it. You know, that's the and, and that's great. A lot of people yeah. don't even have that. So right, I feel right. like. 
you know, if I can, I, I, whatever I'm going to deliver, it's going to be 100% what I'm into. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like it, that's totally acceptable. Um, I, I just ask that. you to keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> so don't tell me about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, so that's all, but, that's... But, yeah, I think, I think that's it. That's the goal. Oh, and that's I awesome. wanted to say, I've been trying to use this phrase for the last few years, uh, which is support the art you love. And ba- like, you know, once every month, every two months, I go to the local store, Electric Fetus is my favorite store in Minneapolis. And I go there and I just buy a bunch of records, shit that, you know, has come out or that I'm into or like, oh, I heard this on, you know, uh, Apple Music and I just I want to buy it. I want to support the artist. Um, and I would say even if a person picked five or ten whatever bands and just said, I'm going to give these people my money, that would that would be awesome. That would be an awesome thing to do. Just sort of pick the five that you think are these are my top five. These are who I love. I will support them, you know, buy a shirt, buy a record. I think that would be awesome. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, I hope one that's, of them is me. <laughs> <laughs> that's you've been reading my blog, Justin. Are you uh, been reading his blog? Post, like, yeah. <laughs> I will post uh, pretty oh, much really? ex- word, for, well, not word for word. Nice. Uh, but basically, okay. yeah, along those lines, I'll send you a link and you can, you can let me know okay. if you, if you, if you like it. Uh, if you hate it, please okay. don't let me know. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's giving yeah. the new motto. So that's for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's have a little fun here. Um, let's. Okay. I think this could be the fastest twenty questions we've ever done. I think this could be a okay. new record. Are you ready for twenty questions, Justin? <laughs> oh God, no. That's my true answer. I'm all not right. ready, but we can do it anyway. <laughs> awesome. That's that's true bravery. Okay, ready? Coffee or tea? Mm-hmm. Coffee. Meat or veggies? Meat. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Canada or Scotland? Scotland. CD or vinyl? I'll ignore that Vinyl. <laughs> Bioshock or Assassin's Creed? Bioshock. Education or experience? Experience. The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones? Ah, fuck. Walking Dead. <laughs> Larry David, who I've met, or Jerry Seinfeld, who I have not. <laughs> Larry David, no contest. That's awesome, awesome. Talent or attitude? Attitude. Fringe or lost? Fringe, fringe, fringe. Yeah, such a great show. <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Twin Peaks or Black Mirror? Twin Peaks. Black Mirror wins for Ross and I. <laughs> yeah, I started watching Twin Peaks. I need to finish it before the new series starts. <sighs> Batman or Superman? Batman. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? The power guy. <sighs> Guys, it's tough. This might be oh, the one. To... Oh, oh, Ross, you might, no, you might get I'm a winner here. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Sorry to get your hopes up, Ross. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I think it was close. I think yeah, he did have to give that one too. Close. I had to think I'm about it. Myself. He was humoring you. <laughs> <clears throat> Vampires or zombies? Vampires. Celine Dion. Or Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. And I don't like either. Oh, really? It wasn't a contest. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I just, I've never listened to either. I really? just, I just feel like that, that was basically the election right there. I was, I was picking between the <laughs> lesser of two evils. Um, well, kind of. Yeah. The extreme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this is probably going to be a really uh, tough question. And the only reason this question exists is because it rhymes. Whale or kale? Kale. Yes. I know that I said meat earlier, but it's... At least you're balancing it out. (laughs) I, in my soul, I'm like a vegan, uh, 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 like I care for all of the, all of the beautiful creatures on this earth. But in reality, like outside of the matrix, I'm eating meat. And uh, Well, I'm an actual vegan who cares about animals and actually doesn't eat them so mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes me very yeah, sad you're better than me <laughs> i'm a stage <laughs> i'm a level five vegan <laughs> sorry it's yeah. okay you justin you and i can go out for a steak we'll leave marcy home. but like no. that's just it it's like i i do have guilt around it right but i'm the first step, not enough first that's gonna sway me first step um <laughs> and i have been vegan before i've been i've been a, a bunch of different things and now i'm just trying to eat small portions of whatever the fuck i want um aside from sugar which is really hard. Um, All right, but, Justin. Uh, Bet Midler or the Riddler? I don't 
No, Bette Midler. Ah, there we go. Ah. And the final yeah. question is... The final question. Should we even, like, lobby against this, like, for this one? We often lobby for the for the answer. Of no, this let's. One. I mean, let's, I'm just gonna say I'm a fellow musician. I'm you know. Let's not pile on the hard, pressure. You know, and just just keep that in mind when answering this next question. Ross is just like a guy I met. I mean, I've like, I've seen you guys twice. It was it was the first the, guy the first gig that my me and my husband and I went to together, and oh, um, I did steal wow. a Motion City soundtrack poster from another venue. But don't tell them. Um, Always got the better story. So the the, the question he committed is, committed a legal it, act. That's what he did. <clears throat> no. It wasn't really. <laughs> he stole. Is that what you want? Is that what you want your your children to know? <laughs> <sighs> so, if you haven't guessed, the the question is um, <clears throat> Ross or Marcio. I'm gonna go with a Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> That's the best choice. I was gonna say that because then be you the combine, you know, you combine one. forces, and yeah. uh, and you become, you know, a rock and roll. Scientist, uh, physicist, superhero, dot dot dot. I'm super bummed that they never made uh, the second movie that was uh, that they previewed in the exit, the, the end credits of of the, of the first movie. But it's never too late. Peter Weller is still with us, as is Jeff Goldblum, John Lithgow, and uh, a slew of other actors. I th- I think they should make it. There we go. We'll lobby for t- against. Oh, why am I saying a lobby against? I, Lobby for them to They're do it. They're rebooting mm-hmm. everything else. Why not Buckaroo Bonsai? That's Bonsai, all they do you know? now. Dude, you're you're an awesome dude. Uh, where can people find you <laughs> online? Um, anyone? I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming most people know who you are who are watching this, but if someone doesn't and doesn't know where um, to find you, where should they go? I'm, I'm getting better at like doing stuff. I, I just started, I'm trying to do these sort of weekly video updates. Okay. I used to work at this place called Video Update in the States, which was like a video rental store, like a uh, blockbuster, but way cooler and less well-known. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so it just made me laugh to call them video updates, but I've been doing that on YouTube uh, just to kind of let people know what I'm doing, but I'm just really bad cool. at like, uh, uh, I, I, I don't have any equipment to make my shit look awesome. Uh, Justin Courtney Pierre or, uh, JCP MCS, uh, on all the like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I kind of, okay. I'm trying to do more of that now that I have less music to play but i'm also have more house stuff to do and a kid to watch <laughs> right so I hear I'm, you. I'm, I'm, yeah. it's like an equal amount of not getting anything done yeah um or actually you're doing terms, more than ever but it feels like nothing's getting done i can totally relate that's to that. it <laughs> you're working harder yeah. than you yeah. ever have but it's like ah. well and that's yeah and i'm actually working on a, a a website so eventually i'll have like one place i don't know if people actually visit websites anymore if but, you need someone to design uh, your website there's a co-host of mine here that does that he mm. does music websites just say it oh. he does oh, gosh. he does hmm. well i might have <laughs> yeah. to to give you a little call a ring um, ring ring <laughs> A ring it, ring it, ring, 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 ring. That's Banana awesome. Phone. So people okay. can find you on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, basically. Yeah, and, all uh, it's either you're JCP pretty friendly. You, or yeah, yeah. You 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 seem pretty friendly on there. Um, and if anyone I'm a horrible person. Hi. He's a horrible person. Yeah, yeah but I'm he will tweet you. I'm back, a horrible so. person. <laughs> so go say hi. Uh, to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just may take a week. I still have like right, right. six months worth of mail. I have a PO oh, box, right. and I have a six months worth of mail I got to get to. I'm just I'm just very slow at getting through things and i'm still i think in may or june on facebook of responding to messages well yeah i hope everyone goes to check out your stuff and our stuff too which ross will talk about now i think <laughs> yeah ross will ross will jump in so yeah you can find us as in our podcast on twitter facebook itunes and youtube don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of our shirts while you're there uh, we've got seven colors available lots of different sizes no excuse go grab one that's right and as for me personally i'm working on my second solo album you can be a part of it at marcinovelli.com slash pledge i'm also releasing an acoustic ep called the reimagining that should be out before the end of the year look out for that i'm really excited about it uh, make sure to follow me on twitter facebook instagram and spotify which are all my name marcinovelli and I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and Facebook Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, The Rockstar Advocate, Buck Naked Soap Company, 30 Roses, Wendy Donaldson, and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes, so please check them out because they truly keep this show alive. So show them your support like they show us their support. And if you'd like to sponsor the show um, and receive a free t-shirt, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes so you don't miss any episodes and leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the show. 
Yes, Justin. Seriously, this has been a true pleasure. You're a very unique and wonderful individual, <laughs> and uh, and I mean that as the most sincere compliment. And it's uh, it's it's been a true honor to have you on the show today. Well, thank you. My wife tells me the same thing every night before she goes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's not uh, true, is it? <laughs> that's not no, no. unique, though. I, I've had that word thrown at me a few times, and I, 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 I've learned to love it. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. And we'll see you on next week's episode. Bye.